Today's video is about work-life balance. But before we get started, since you guys always comment on my t-shirts, look at this bad boy, huh? Vintage LL Cool J. I'm just gonna call it out, because it's awesome. And I know you know it's awesome. I know you're jealous of it. I'll just tuck it back in and pretend. Okay, it's work-life balance. How do you do it all? I get this question a lot. And believe it or not, I have a formula and it works amazing. And it's called the 12-hour rule. And this is what it looks like. So if we've got 168 hours in a seven day week, right? 24 hours, seven days a week. I got out my little phone calculator, 168. And you're sleeping eight of them, eight hours a night, right? That's gonna leave you with 112 waking hours. Now before you crap all over my, I'm not sleeping eight hours, yes you are. You are doing it at least seven, preferably eight. Don't need more than eight because it's one of the best things you can do for your health, for your weight, for your immunity, anti-aging, sleep, sleep, sleep. That could be a whole that, it's another video. But just trust me, in this one, focus on seven to eight hours of sleep. Let's say you're getting eight. So we have 112 waking hours in our week, okay? You're a single parent. Let's say you're a single parent, which is the most difficult scenario, arguably. And you spend 50 hours running your home pre-COVID. Mind you, this worked a lot better pre-COVID. One day things will be, God willing, somewhat normal again. And the kids have a place to go during the day. So let's say 50 hours a week running the home of shuttling the kids to soccer practice. If you have kids, which by the way, makes it even harder. So single parent is one of our, single working parent is one of our hardest scenarios, okay? So 50 of those 112 hours, we're shuttling the kids back and forth. We're taking the dog to the vet. We're picking up the dry cleaning. We're dropping off the, the, the freaking all the crap you do in a day. Pick something, the, the FedEx package, you're returning to Amazon, whatever it might be. 50 of those hours are dedicated to running the home. All right, next, 50 of those hours are work. So I'm not even gonna do a 40 hour work week. I'm gonna do a 50 hour work week. Okay, that leaves you with 12 hours. And again, this is our worst case scenario. Hopefully you have a significant other or if you're separated or divorced, you still split the home running time with the other individual. Like I'm very fortunate to have Heidi, my co-parent extraordinaire, who does a lot of the heavy lifting with the kids' schedules, right? So I get some of her 50 hours to run the household and she gets some of mine. But even if your worst scenario was single working parent, and you spend 50 hours like a chicken with your head cut off running home and running the home and 50 hours working to pay the bills, that still leaves you with 12 hours a week. And these hours are non-negotiable. They must be scheduled. And if I can figure it out, so can you. And it works as follows. Let's say we did only four 30 minute workouts and you did them at home, but the gyms are closed anyway, but you're not traveling to and from a location, at least right now. So, okay, four 30 minute workouts, that's two of your hours. Fantastic. Now we've got one appointment. It could be the dentist. It could be your internist. It could be a hair appointment. It could be a facialist. I don't care. Pick a hygiene slash health appointment. Schedule it. It's another two hours. So we've used four of the 12. Now you have a weekly friend appointment. It could be a friend lunch, brunch on Sunday, dinner, drinks, uh, it, it could double up, right? Maybe you guys go hiking, we get the workout and friend thing in, you get one social event. So schedule your friends accordingly. Hopefully you, there's, a, there's a person, well not a hopefully, but maybe there's a significant other in your life, schedule a date night. We're now, let's say two to three hours for the friends, two to three hours for the date night. We're somewhere around 10 hours a week Maybe there's a hobby, right? Um, I like to ride my horse. I like to go out on a paddle board. I get that in once a week. One of those things. Hopefully, in some cases, I can spend some of my kid time out on the paddle board, right? I can, I can cross pollinate my activities where I can take my kids out with the horses or I can take my kids out on the paddle board or I can see a friend and be active at the same time. But the 12 hours is enough to maintain my health, maintain my hygiene, right? Have a social life, engage in things I love, and still be physically active. But you gotta schedule it. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Of course not, nothing's perfect. 
but it's better than going, I just don't have the time, screw it. You don't, you don't get to say, I don't have the time, screw it. So 12 hours, start scheduling it right now, your time. It's okay. There's nothing, there's nothing bad about making time for yourself. And if you're like, well, I just don't, I don't know what to do with the kids home during COVID. I give them an iPad, let them watch their iPad and play a game while you work out. Like the world won't end. You know what I mean? It's like, it's okay to use the iParent every now and again. 